Hey, what's going on, Car Motivator followers? This is Sean Kelly, the Car Biz Coach, CEO of Car Motivators. We are bringing coaching to the car business, and the reason for this Winning Cultures webinar, um, we're going to be doing these much more frequently because the reason that we're doing them more frequently is you guys ask for it. I asked you guys in the group last week, I said, hey, what would add more value to this group? And I gave you about 20 different options. And um, I was happy to hear that you guys said, hey, make it, you know, involve us more. You know, we want to be a part of this thing and we want to be showcased in your group. So I figured, you know what, I've got a, you guys make perfect sense on that. I've got this amazing group with about a thousand people in it. I coach about 80% of you guys, 20% have been brought in. Uh, by people I coach, and I said, you know, we're going to start showcasing you guys even more. So today, I'm really excited about my guest, and I'm going to introduce Adam here in just a second. Um, but before I do, I just want to give you guys line of sight to the topic. Um, our, the topic, as we almost always focus on, is leadership of some in some capacity, way, shape, or form. Well, Adam and I met through the Facebook group, and he was brought in by someone else who's a, a fan and a friend or, or someone we coach, and Adam came in. Um, he joined the Facebook group and immediately we hit it off. We have a lot of things in common, um, which I'll let Adam tell you a little more about that. But uh, Adam, why don't you go ahead and tell everyone, introduce yourself, tell everyone where you work and how long you've been in the car business. Hey, everybody. Uh, my, my name is Adam Klostock. Uh, I work at Billy Wood Ford. It's a, we're, we're a little oddity Ford store in uh, Gina, Louisiana. We... Uh, we're right dead center of the state, but we are actually uh, for for the for the town that we live in. We are uh, a volume dealer, and uh, we do all that direct, basically by social media and internet, and 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 drive a lot of business in by that. But uh, this topic, uh, leadership, and when we when the, when he did the poll last week, I looked at it and I went, I, I looked at the questions and and and. You know, leadership hits me hard. I, I was in the service before uh, I, I got in the automotive industry. I've been in the industry now 16 years and uh, been here uh, 12 of it. And, and I've worked every just about every position in the dealership. But uh, to, to me, leading by example it is a, a strong key in a manager because – a, a manager that can just that'll just get out there and and say, "Hey, go do this," isn't really a good manager to me. That's 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 kind of a that's a that's a bully. Hey, and I wouldn't listen to him personally. I'd be like, "Whatever, dude." But a guy that'll get out there and show it, and uh, and somebody had to teach me this because I, I, I obviously boom, I, it was installed in the, in the in the Marine Corps with me, but. Because you don't give your troops a gun and say, "Here, go shoot it." <laughs> but uh, with my guys, what I mean, I, I I'm constantly with them. I mean, if they ever need me, it's no matter. Hey, hey, I got an idea. Come here. Hold on. Hang on. Put them on hold. Do this. Do that. Do this. Listen. Hey, let me talk to them. Or as far as even going out and selling with them on the lot, and, and they see that, and and my guys. I mean, I I, I say this a lot of times, and even. My, my dealer gets a little aggravated sometimes. I say, I can tell them to go jump off the roof and, and face first, and they'll do it, boss. We'll see if you can do it. <laughs> and, and, and it's kind of – he gets mad about it. Uh, they follow me, um, and it's because I, I don't ask them. They know when I when I tell them to do something, it's not it, – I'm going to come right behind them and do it. Adam, but, uh, Adam, that's a really good point you just brought up there, man, because – I, I, I see it at dealers all over the place. It's the managers are, are telling them to do something that maybe, maybe they did themselves a long time ago or back in the day, uh, but maybe they haven't done recently. Um, or maybe, you know, or maybe that employee hasn't ever seen them do it. Right. So I, I think that, you know, and by the way, to give you guys that are watching this line of sight, you know, leadership is a big topic. So I said specifically, Adam, what would you want to focus on? And he picked the topic, you know, so the entire uh, webcast, this Winning Cultures webcast now is going to be about leading by example. Um, and, and I think that uh, it's just something that often is overlooked and, and maybe it's not overlooked as a manager, but I think as a manager, we get sidetracked and, and we don't end up leading by example because of different diversions. And what, what do you think? What are some of the reasons? What are some of the challenges to leading by example, if you were just to name a few things that might prevent a manager 
from stepping up and, and showing someone how it's done, what, what are some of those challenges? Um, honestly, one of the biggest ones, they've never really been shown how it's done. Um, fear. Fear is, uh, I mean, it's, it's false evidence appearing real, but I mean, we all know that, but that they're afraid to do it. They, they, they want, they want to instruct, but they don't know how to follow through with the instructions and, 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 and motivation of doing it. I mean, I, I think you as well as anybody know is, you know, attitude is the thing that drives it. And, uh, I, I have the kind of attitude when I, if my guys are struggling, the last thing you do, if, if I saw a hand reaching out of the water after, about the ground, I'm not going to let there and, and, and tell them, hey, grab the boat. I'm going to grab their hand. Right. And, uh, I, I, I come in, I get involved. I, I believe in EMI very, very much so. I, I introduce myself to every single customer sales service. It doesn't matter because it's in my store on a daily basis, especially working deals. Adam, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. No, it's interesting. So you said uh, you mentioned a couple things. You know, the the motivation or the attitude to get up and do it. You know, I, I think there's complacency, right? You get comfortable sitting behind that desk, and you get in your comfort zone, and that's one thing. And then you also mentioned, you know, they haven't done it themselves or been trained how to do it. You know, I, bottom line is this, man. There's no dealership out there where if you've been a manager for more than a year, you've probably they probably implemented something new that you didn't do when you were a manager, right? So like, for instance, let's use video as an example. If, if all of a sudden you've added video and now you expect your sales team to shoot videos, but you're not doing it, haven't been trained how and aren't showing them how, I think that's a big hurdle. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Uh, I think that, that's funny that you said, we do live videos on, on almost every, if, if a customer is going to, matter of fact, we just about sort of, it, we beg our customers, even if they won't let us, Hey, we do a live video like on our deliveries and you know, I do them. I got out and done. I had, I did one earlier today. Uh, and I, for, for a salesperson because I, this, this world is a digital world. It's either jump in the new wave or, or, or sink. You're not going to make it. And you know, I, I, I find it funny. A lot of my competitors are, are, are starting to do the, as we do. But, uh, and that's good. They're, they're learning and I, I hope they do. I wish them the best, but, uh, you know, I, I, the voice of the customer and, and, and getting yourself out there, branding yourself. You know, I, I've been, I've been working on social media now for years and I, I have a, a loyal following and our, our store does and, 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 you know, our community follows us definitely, but you know, we sell cars all over the world. We deliver. And it and off of social media, it's it's amazing how far out. I've been delivered one in West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. It's nuts. And the guy came in on Facebook post, a live post, but Facebook post on during that season. Yeah, and and you know what? You actually, it's interesting. You talked about the social media thing because you know it's like lead follower get out of the way, right? If if the social, it, you know, you're doing things on social media, you're you're showing other dealers how to do it, and then and you're, as a result not just other dealers doing it, but your sales team, it makes them easier to do it. And, and by the way, that's one of the things guys that are watching this, that Adam and I have in common. We both really care about like, like cancer is a, a cause that's very important to both of us. Um, and my mother was diagnosed with lymphoma when I was young and she's in remission. And then Adam's that's been a challenge, a challenge in his family. And the reason I share that with you guys is because I thought it was really cool. One of the reasons that uh, Adam, the things we were talking about earlier was how his dealership was, was selling cars for cancer research what a great way to to lead by example and show people that dealers care about more than just selling cars you know adam uh, what how did that come about why did you guys decide to do that and uh, what have you seen as a result of sharing that with your community well uh it was it's kind of funny i i generally um uh, i come up with all our advertising uh you know and, and this month I was struggling because everybody's going to do spooky, boo, -hoo, you know, whatever. That's going to be Halloween themed. <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, that's not what October is all about. And, uh, you know, it's breast cancer awareness, but we're, we're going into cancer awareness, period. Um, I, I lost my mother to it. I, I have uh, a dear friend with it, and I've lost several friends 
two cancer of different types. But uh, I, I got, I just basically shut my showroom down earlier. Uh, we had got done delivering a vehicle and I was like, Hey guys, look, I'm struggling with an idea. I am tired of the, you know, we're going to do a trunk or treat given, you know, that's just something we're going to do. But uh, what's a good idea? Give me something. And they, they started throwing ideas at me. And the one that stuck was let's donate money to every new car for, to every new car delivered to cancer awareness. And I was like, that's what we're doing. And, and, and because, and, and, and two different people said it, I, I didn't hear one of them. I, and I, I, I and, but uh, I, I heard the other one chime in on it. And, and I was like, boom, that's it. And, and it's not, it's actually not about selling cars because yes, we're going to sell cars. But the more cars we sell, the more cars we can donate to that cause. And that's just more money that cause has to find a cure for such a, a disease that takes out our loved ones on a daily basis. That's awesome, Adam. Um, yeah, and, and I absolutely love the fact that you guys are stepping up and you're being progressive and you're leading by example. And it's, it's, you're doing it at a dealership level, at, at, well, at an industry level, and then at a dealership level, you're doing it internally. Um, and I want to share something that uh, I think is really important at getting your employees to be effective at what they do. And, and it's just a, a basic skill transfer process. You know, it's like, think about this. Go back to when you first were learning how to drive a stick shift, right? It's not like someone just explained to you verbally how you should drive a stick shift and then you were able to go drive that thing, right? I mean, so, someone had to actually like explain you how to do it and then show you how to do it. And then they watched you do it. And they watched you fail about 20 times. Then they told you what you were doing wrong every time and gave you the feedback to help you improve on it, right? We have got to do the same thing with our employees, man. We've got to, um, we've got to show our salespeople how to do it. We've got to explain to them how to do it. Then we've got to show them. Then we've got to watch them do it. Then we've got to give them the observation and coaching on it. And then once they get complacent and they start falling back on, on you know, they get in their comfort zone and they stop paying attention, that's when we've got to do it again, right? And do more observation. What, what do you think about that? Well, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think me and you have talked about this. I, I have an off-site training facility. Uh, I was talking to David Villa about this the other day. Uh, uh, we were talking about him coming down and him and Joe Kayla, and, uh, and we train daily, and it's mandatory. Uh, and what I do, and do ones on a daily basis, and, what, and we find our, our weaknesses. It's, uh, it, you, you, you learn to, that you learn to forget what is not in front of you. And, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge Grant Cardone fan and I'm a, I, I am a devout Joe Verde fan. I, I mean, I, 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 I pick on the people at Joe Verde when they call on me. I go, man, I could be, I could, I could get in there with, with Tim and them and train a class with them. So, you know, I, I don't try to sell me. I'm a, on this, but it, I know because I know it works, but you know, in our store, we do Joe, my salespeople do Joe Verde one course a day, four days a week, and then they're free. They do it when they come in, they make their phone calls, and it, it's just you, you practice, you drill, and you rehearse, and you do it all the time. We have walk around competitions. I pull the money out of my own pocket here. Here's a hundred bucks to the winner. And, and, the, and the funniest thing is, I never tell them what car it is the customer is never going to give you time to prepare when they pull up to go, oh, guess what? I called you. Well, you know the thing. It's not they, – they don't give you two weeks to let you know what's going on. Right. So well, I always pull it randomly out there. Yeah. That's funny. Well, I, I think you've got to keep it interesting, keep it fun. I think you've got to, to give them dynamic, you know, different uh, – they've got to hear it from different people in different ways, and they can kind of adopt it to their own style. Um, I, you know, I, I think that – I love how you said it's mandatory every day. I mean, it's just something that's part of the culture of your dealership. And, and, you know, just to give you a line of sight, and I think you know this too, is that, you know, car motivators, we actually coach dealers across the country that already have training platforms. In fact, one of the biggest, you know, now I still run across dealers that don't have any training at all, which is, is a shock to me. But um, when they, when I do run across that, I'll hear them often say, Oh, we don't need, we don't need more training. We already invest in training. And then it's funny because then I'll tell them something like, well, that's good because I'm not a trainer, I'm a coach. And what we offer is a lot different, right? And that, you know, goes back to 
our conversation this morning where, where we were kind of chatting about, you know, people who self-assess, right? And, and I, we were talking about one-on-ones with your people. And, and, and you're one of those managers that does a lot of one-on-ones. And often I hear managers, they do one-on-ones when they, find, when they see their people need help with something, which I think is an important part of it, right? But the, the benefit to me to adding coaching into your culture is that it's not always the manager's agenda anymore. And if you can have your people self-assessing and coming to you and saying, hey, boss, here's what I need to get better at. Here's where I need help. There's so much more value in it because if we, as a manager, we tell someone what to get better at, then they change sometimes. Um, if they choose where they want to get better, then they get better all the time. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it, I, I made a post live earlier, you know, about taking a checkup from the neck up every day. And oh, wow. uh, that was a great video. I, um, I do that. I've been doing it. Uh, my sales manager's name, is, his name is Steve Beasley. Uh, he works at a Nissan dealership. Uh, but every day when I, as I put my time on, I look at myself and I go, do I have the right attitude? Do I, you know, am I ready for this? And You know, what do I need to work on if I'm not there? And, and my guys do it. They come to me a lot and go, Adam, look, Hey, I struggle with this. Can you help me with this? Okay. Well, if it's something with the phone, well, let's sit down and let's make 50 phone calls together. Uh, if, that's a if, sign that they've got that growth mindset. You know, they want to get better. They want to improve and they're not just waiting for someone to tell them what to do. I think that's a huge, that that's a sign of a, a winning culture. Well, I don't, I don't believe in turnover, Sean. I do not believe in it because if I, if a salesman, if one of my employees fails, it means I fail. And that's not a winning formula for me. Uh, I, I, if my hands are involved, that you know, can you can ever can you be a hundred percent on target with everybody? No, but I can be ninety nine. Uh, I, I have a a pretty good tenure among my sales staff. I do have a couple of green fees because we are in grow mode, uh, and, and it to 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 grow, you got to grow. You know, you, you either grow or regress, and that's not an option anymore. So, uh, but uh, so you know, let, let me ask you. So, let me ask you a question as far as um, you know, looking at leadership as a whole. Let, let's say there's a manager who's brand spanking new, and then you got a manager who's been there for a long, long time, and he's been he's been a leader at the dealership for 15 plus years. What would your best piece of advice be for the new manager and the, the seasoned veteran? Get off your butt and show them how to do it. That is the, I, 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 have, I, I have a lot of respect for uh, one, one of our, our, our operating, operations manager, Aaron Harvey. He's a, uh, I think I added him to the group. He, uh, he's a, he, is a, he is a leader that leads by example and, and, and has been a great inspiration to me in my career. And uh, I mean, so, so. It, it, and and uh, the biggest thing that happens in, in managers, it, and I don't know if, if you'll agree with this or not, but 99% of managers that have been in management for a long time can't go back and sell. They've forgotten how to do it. And when you forget how to do it, you end up losing the basics. If you can get out there with your guys on a daily basis, man, hit the ground with them. Hit the ground with them. See what they're struggling with. Because then you'll come up with a solution to help them figure it out, and it's something that I do. I'm serious. I I went out the other day. I wear a suit most days. It was I'm in Louisiana. We never know what our weather is. Humid down there. It was 102 degrees, and I'm out there selling an F-150. And they're like, "Boss, we got this." No, I'm gonna help you with it. And it's like, "No, we got this." Okay, I understand. I'm still gonna be here until we're done. I got somebody in there that's capable of handling the store. We're good. Let's come on. Let's, let's finish this out. And they, they watched me walk it through the whole process. And, and guess what? They sold the car. So, you know, it, it just, it means something. Get out there and help you guys. Cause they look, being a manager, there's a little Mimi and it's the guy telling people what to do, pointing his finger. And then there's the guy that's pulling the, the pyramid or the brick. I'd rather be the guy pulling the brick because the hard work pays off in the end. Right. 
Listen, I completely agree with you, Adam. And we're going to start wrapping up, but I want to throw one more piece of advice or, or tip out there. You know, the, the, what I believe the four C's of leadership are character, coaching, competence, and caring. All right. Meaning, you know, and, and if you think about that for just a second, if you take time to, to observe your people in action, show them how to do it, you know, uh, give them the coaching and feedback they need to improve. And then that shows that you care about them, right? Also, it shows that you're competent because you're, if you're competent at what you do, then you can show them how to do it. And then, then they do it and it works. Um, and, by, and, and I completely agree with you, man. I think it is easy to lose touch with that showroom floor and, and those, those job roles that you don't do anymore. So I think, I think training them and being in the mix is, is very important. Not, you know, by training them, that's going to help you retain it. By doing it and doing the TOs and all that, that's going to help you retain it. It's one of the reasons why I still sell and I still lead. I mean, literally, like I have clients here in and around St. Louis um, that still buy cars for me. And I still take the time out to sell them a car because at the end of the day, I, I, if I'm working with dealers across the country, I got to be able to practice what I preach, you know? And beyond that, that's also why I do a lot of the things I do is the social media or, and that's why I have coaches that I also train to sell. And then I coach them on how to sell. I listened to three calls from one of my coaches today. I had him record them so I could listen to him in action and then give him feedback. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, I think you're right. I think it's lead, follow, or get out of the way. And if, if you want to be a leader in the auto industry, you've got to step up. You've got to show them. You've got to lead by example, man. What a great topic, Adam. Uh, it's an honor having you here, man. What Any advice, last advice for the sales team? Uh, you know, if any, any salespeople out there, um, I think that sometimes they there's an opportunity for them to step up and lead too. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, we, we actually, that, that was in our, I've got two new got new guys. Uh, we were talking about helping each other, being a team. You know, everybody's a, a lot of dealerships split deals. We got them. We split deals. But uh, you know, there's times when it it, it takes zero dollars to be a good person. And and you know, if, if for the new guy coming in, welcome him. He's not your competition. And and because you know and and what he is he's, he's your growth because you can learn something anybody i learn stuff from my salespeople. i mean it's it, this, this business we'll never figure it out that's what we're here to do is, is is learn as much as we can but the day we figure it out we're done but uh <laughs> these guys my guys they they work well as a team and, and and i'm proud of them because they do help each other they you know don't look at the guy over there struggling and, and, and trying to figure it out. You know, if you're a salesman and you're in this, and, and hey, look, the best thing you can do is is, is help someone because you know it's it's what the good book tells us to do at least. You know what that that is the, uh, the man. What a great way to end this this uh, web what I hate to call it web webinar. It's a webcast. What a great way to end this webcast. Um, and the fact that you know talking about how helping first. You know. I, there's too many salespeople out there that I that reach out to me because they want a promotion. And I'm like, well, what are you doing to get promoted? And the answer is almost never, well, I'm stepping up and I'm training new people and I'm helping my manager where he needs it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, if you want to become a leader, then you need to act like one first. It doesn't go the other way around. It's that simple. So, Adam, thank you for all your awesome insights on leadership, buddy. Um, if you if anyone of Adam's fans for, or family members or, or customers watch this, Billy Wood Ford, Mandana, Louisiana, that's your place to buy a car. By the way, uh, and my other dealerships, my Havy, I currently have a Ford and a Lincoln. You know, I grew up in the car business in Ford, so I'm with you. Uh, though I did sell Hyundais for quite a long time. Had a Genesis, loved it. <laughs> but uh, Adam, thank you for being a part of this web, Winning Cultures webcast. We love your, we really appreciate and love your insights, my friend. Hey, brothers, it's great to get on here. And as always, I always enjoy talking to you, man. And uh I hope people should get something from this because uh, let me tell you something. I, 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 I did. The guy that, taught, that that trained me, he gave me some insight that I, I, I could, I'm going to pass on for as long as my heart's pumping. So That's awesome, buddy. Well, guys, listen, this is Sean Kelly, the CEO of Car Motivators. I'm, I'm going to wrap this thing up by letting you know, don't forget, we got Rockstar Auto Conference playing uh, that's going to be in las vegas october 14th sunday and monday the 15th uh, right after that i'll be a digital dealer so if you're going to be a digital dealer i'll be working with coaching consulting for irecon cars 
Um, come see us at that booth to check that software out. It's amazing stuff, and I'm excited to help Mike Boyd over there. Um, and guys, uh, keep keep creating winning cultures every day by coaching excellence in your team. All right, my friends, this is Sean Kelly, the Carvis Coach, out. Adam, say goodbye. Bye, guys. God bless you. God bless you all.